Welcome back, dear ones. So today I wish to talk about the dark night of the soul. And that experience, the dark night of the soul, is actually one of the main reasons I started this channel. To be able to be a light and to help navigate you if you find yourself in this experience. Um, based on my own experiences with the dark night of the soul uh, and the first time I went through this breaking down for breaking through is in the end of the 90s so it's more than 20 years ago and back then there was no YouTube there was no platforms like this um, where we easily could get information and feel connected connected and help us navigate this experience so at that time I was very very alone in having this uh, very painful awakening and so I want to return to this raw unfiltered path that so many of us humans go through when we need to let go of everything that we think is defining us to wake up to the truth of who we are And when I say that, when I talk about my experience with my dark nights of the soul, and yes, there has been more than one, there has been a couple of them, and there will probably be more. So, for many, it doesn't happen just once. Um, and it is, even though, I mean, Even though it is such a heavy experience in one sense, it holds so much light. And this is what it's all about, right? The dark night of the soul. When we go into the darkest, darkest places in us to rediscover the light that we are. And it may last for a couple of months and it may my longest one lasted about two years non-stop 24 7 and why it happens to some I don't know because I have friends and family most of them actually who haven't had this very intense experiences I have and I don't know why it's that it's just just not the path for everyone or it may be, haven't been yet. Um, I think it has to do on this one level with the prayers we send out, how much we are ready and how willing we are to evolve beyond illusions, beyond our comfort zone, beyond. I think that sometimes we are, I never hesitated. I. I always go for all or nothing, so I, even though it's uncomfortable, I'm not, I didn't sign up to live life half or to just conform and, and I know this has always been my truth or true truth for me to live fully, to really re rediscover who I truly are, who I truly am. And I think for me, some people that may be that just make life comfortable, just allow me to, this is enough for me. I want to stay here and I want to enjoy life from here. Uh, I don't want, I don't want this. I don't have that longing for that deeper connection with that part of me, with my divine self. And I always had that. 
I always had it. I always, I always felt connected. I always had mystical experiences from an early age and started my spiritual practice very early. So when that happened to me in my late teens, I, I already had this connection and I had this experience. But even though the dark night of the soul hit me hard and one aspect of the dark night of the soul is to that we feel really disconnected. It is a time where we feel um, such a deep loneliness. And I want to talk about what it, um, how to know if you are in the dark night of the soul. Uh, and it is, I mean, we go through hard adversity in life. That is part of life. Life. So it doesn't have to be even just because you're losing your job or someone close to you dies or uh, your wife leaves you. It doesn't mean that that takes you to the dark night of the soul. Uh, there is grief, there is suffer and there is pain and that's part of life. Um, but those events may trigger this experience. But the, I would say the, the difference between just experience suffer and um, and the dark night of the soul is that when we go through this deep, deep experience, it is like everything falls away. So many times it's not just you losing your job or your partner leaves you or you lose your home. It's all of them. Uh, or you feel called to leave all of it, uh, even though it doesn't make sense. It may also be, so what, what it is, is that our world is crumbling and falls. Everything we used to know as our lives, as this is mine, this is my family, this is my home, this is my career. Is taken away from us. Um, it may also be that everything on the external stays the same, but we, and this is one of the key aspects of it, we lose ourselves. We lose our abilities to navigate the world. We lose our ability to, um, the ways we use to, to cope with things, and that is when I try to explain for people, that is the most, um, the hardest thing because we lose ourselves. We lose ourselves. And I think, and I know that that's the whole thing with the dark night of the soul because the dark night of the soul, <coughs> excuse me, is, um, losing is the death of the ego it's losing the ways we thought were the ways for us <clears throat> to live our highest divine life and purpose <clears throat> the ident identification with who we thought we were and what we were here to do it's a, such a redirection of defining who you are and what you're here to do so you need and that this is what happened to us you need to break down to break through and of course it's such a profound painful experience it, it, it is as <clears throat> I would <clears throat> compare it with giving birth these forces are so strong you know that they can kill you literally but you need to dance with them you need to surrender to them because it is um your life and your journey has been taken over by a greater force than you to redirect you to redefine you to reinvent you so you can wake up to who you truly truly are so 
going through the dark night of the soul, you may experience deep fear, the sense of being totally lost, depression, this, the looking at your world, your future, your life, and not knowing what the next step is. That's the very common. Or think that I should be doing this, but I just can't. You can't get yourself together. You can't get yourself... You can't just manage... You just don't can't manage life anymore. And you cannot see and find a way to... You cannot see that light in the tunnel. You just don't know what's next for me. And what happens, what it always comes back to, is such a great surrender to the now because we have nothing else nothing else so when this has been when I have been through these episodes in my life we just have to give up we, have just, we just need to surrender go to be down on our knees and just reconnect with something that is greater than our human self who cannot fathom all this, what we are going through, who cannot see the way, who cannot understand, who tries to understand and tries to push through. But that's the thing, we cannot push anymore and that's the whole purpose we can just surrender give up and I spoke to my best friend earlier today and she said so beautifully and so very true when we give up we give up we offer up we offer up to source to our higher self to the aspects in us that is connected to the light within us that is one with all there is. Because we have tried to make it our way. And it's just not going to work anymore. So when you go through the dark night of the soul, even though there is so much darkness, so much pain, and it feels like you can't even catch your breath, Many times there's also this, when you fully sur surrender to it, when you fully surrender, allow yourself to fully feel your emotions, to fully break down. And this is something I really want you to allow yourself to do, allow yourself to break down. And it is not that easy because we have so many strategies to keep keep us up and if you have children if people are depending on you uh, it can be very fearful um, but if you surrender to it if you allow yourself if you have some moments for you for you, only you and not trying to hold yourself together because you are in pieces and allow the pieces to just fall allow yourself to fall on your knees to cry your heart out, to allow yourself to break totally. That will bring you so much healing because the dark night of the soul is a tremendous opportunity for healing. Healing your disillusions, healing your wounds because it is the light that is ready to enter you. And after these breakdowns, I always experienced this another level of awareness, 
of connection, of serenity and peace. And it may seem so strange that this can happen in a couple of hours. A new level of just knowing that there is a purpose to it, knowing that something will be born through this, something that is greater, something that is, I don't want to use this um, terms of better and greater in one sense, uh, because this is, it's not an ego, but something that it will bring you, you. It will bring you home to who you truly are, to a place where you are, feel aligned, and there, there is peace. So don't fight it. Don't fight it. Allow it. So I will say that the going through this experience, it happens in waves, just like labors, just like giving birth. There is this wave coming over you and you just need to, to surrender to it. And after that, labor has to see that there is peace, there is silence within and around, and there is clarity of mind, and there is connection. And don't worry if you cannot feel that, because that's an aspect of the dark night of the soul as well, that I, in the pain, I discovered that our guides take a step back. It's like when we go through the um, an eclipse season, for example, that we are a purpose is to feel disconnected because we cannot just uh, give away our power to our guides all the time. We need to really, we need to break down. We need to feel the pain. We need to. Um, rebuild and rise as who we truly are and for this to happen we need to become aware of what we are not and what path we are on that what isn't aligned so I feel like this in the coming time this year and the coming years there is many of us who will go through the dark night of the soul maybe for the first time or maybe it's your 10th. So I want to talk about this openly and I want to be a reflection of that light that if you find this when you are in complete darkness I want you to just reach out my hand and give you the glimpse of light that whatever, no matter how it feels there is a purpose to it there is a reason and there is a liberation an awakening in it it is a blessing in disguise. So embrace it fully. And when we think we have surrendered, surrender even more because there's so many layers to our resistance. We try to keep together. We try to go where we think life wants us to go or where we should go and what we should do and what we should be so it makes us truly humble 
truly connected to all there is and truly it awakens our heart, our compassionate heart for all. And this is why it's many times is so deeply connected with becoming, living your soul's purpose. When you go through the dark night of the soul, it many times redirects you because you are so one with who you truly are and you have been forced to truly find that light in you because you cannot find it in the world. You cannot find it in another, in a person or a teaching or anything. You really, it, that's the thing. If I want to just put it in a couple of sentences, sentence what the light, dark night of soul is, is to, in the midst, midst of you losing everything, even yourself, you rediscover who you truly are, your light. And when you have, like you, when you can lean on that light, when you see that light in you, when you know it's there, you will see it in others. And many times that become one of your missions, or your mission as it is for me, to help others to journey and to navigate back to their own light. Because there's nothing in you or in another that fears you, that scares you or that you fear because you, you've been in the darkest dark. You died and you, you were rebirthed then. So, what to do? I would say if this is you, be gentle to yourself. When I say gentle to yourself, it doesn't mean to escape by watching Netflix. You know, we need to listen to the ego mind that tells you to just be on the couch, drinking wine. No. Treat yourself with compassion and love. Give your time, if you're able to, to rest. Give yourself the opportunity to not hold yourself together, to break down. It sounds strange, but that's the way through. Break down to break through. I would also say to you, not talk to too many, uh, because not everyone will understand. And if you haven't, if someone else haven't been through it, they cannot understand the depth of the darkness and the pain and how lost we are and they will just tell you to get your acts together maybe or go see a doctor and get um, be put on medications and um, allow this to be a time for you a time in your own cave uh, because this has been this is part of the initiations we go through as we wake up to our divinity and this is what happened in many mystery schools uh, through this um, through other civilizations and uh, other in other dimensions as well and the thing is that people didn't always survive these initiations so i don't say that to scare you i just <laughs> point out that if you feel it's hard of course it is hard death can be painful but it's also by allowing our false sense of self to die that we can rise anew that we can awaken to our resurrection of who we truly are so there's nothing wrong with you and you're not going crazy you're not going crazy so treat yourself with love and compassion and be in silence as much as you can with yourself. Um, don't look for the answers out there because you have them in you. There is no path that is right for you that someone else can give you the answer of what to do and where to go. 
because you are waking up to your own strength to depend on you and you only in your connection with your true self with source Another thing about the dark night of the soul is that there may be, we may feel like our bodies are breaking down as well. And, and sometimes very deeply connected with the Kundalini awakening. This happened the second time for me when it lasted so long. Um, so we may feel so energy rush going through our bodies, uh, headaches, migraine, like a muscle tension and ache and like the bones in our bodies are hurting and, of, and because the nervous system is so under pressure because the light is coming in and there is such a divine intervention and of course it's very because when we purge when we purge all all misalignment out from our bodies of course it is heavy heavy stuff are you able to take some epsom salt bath do and be in nature drink lots of water be very uh, be very specific uh, be very choosing with what you choose to co consume food drinks um everything that triggers your nervous system like um caffeine alcohol i would quit and just soothe yourself soothe yourself so there one and i also encourage you it would be beautiful if there could be in a discussion about it or in the comment field if you share your experiences if you're going through this right now or if you have because it, it brings us together and helps us to connect and I think it I know it will be so helpful for many and if you you are deeply welcome to ask questions and I will answer them because in the in, maybe there will be a Q&A <clears throat> about this topic because I will return to this because it is uh, one of the aspects why I'm here on earth and my mission and my purpose with me showing up on YouTube um, so it doesn't matter how long we've been on a spiritual part, uh, path how advanced we are in our practices when we go through this, there will be times when you forget all of it. And that's a part of it as well, because we have to reinvent the ways we connect as well. And the practices we hold on to. Is it because we think it keeps us safe? Or are we giving away our power by doing this? So it will, all, it will literally shake every aspect of you and your life and the ground you stand on. Oh dear ones, so um, most of all why I share this today is to, to bring you some hope, to bring back to you some of this that you already know because you know deep down in your heart what this is all about even if you haven't been given any signs or this might be your sign so don't fear don't fear and surrender and allow it yourself to go through it one breath at a time because everything we thought kept us safe and every plan we had everything we thought was ours is just an illusion there is nothing to hold on to but to delight in us. And so make it one breath at a time. Be present here. Be present here. And if life asks you to show up, if your higher self 
shows you the direction to go and the steps to take, do it. Do it. So don't fear. Don't fear. This too is divinely guided. Even though you can't feel it or trust it right now. But make your life one breath at a time because that's all we got. And surrender to the now. Become present in the now. That's the key and that's the way through. And you will, you will get through this. And you're not alone. So please share with me your thought on this. And if you think that this can benefit anyone, please share it with them. And please like and subscribe if you enjoy. That brings great support for me to show up. And I send you much love and deep blessings. Thank you.